Hello again and welcome to the Computer Labs YouTube channel. So in this video I'm going to show you how to correctly make up a CAT6 cable using RJ45 pass-through end connectors. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing you are going to need is a correct set of crimps. Now I have a couple of sets in uh, in my tool set. Uh, one is the blue set that I'm showing you at the moment. And I've used these a lot uh, for Cat 5Es. Uh, and these are the sort of the old style plugs with the uh, blank at the end. So this type of connector, you can see, I'll just get this uh, boot off this Cat, 5, uh, Cat 5E cable. Uh, but once we've got the boot off, I'll just show you what I mean. But this Cat 5 uh, crimp, uh, is a blank end so basically the wires push up inside the plastic molding uh, so there's nowhere for the wires to come out um, and this is still used nowadays uh, but I tend now to prefer to use the pass-through ones so this particular one with the blank plugs um, you push it into the tool push down crimp the, the um, connector uh, to the wire uh, and that's how it's made up and obviously all when you crimp all the copper plates uh, bite into the uh, connectors you've pushed through and terminate the uh, connector to the cable. But we're not gonna do that uh, today. Uh, we're gonna be using the uh, pass-through cable. Um, we're gonna use the Klein Tools one. Uh, so you see the Klein Tools one here. Um, these connectors, uh, that I'll just, let me just quickly just get this out of the way and just quickly just go through the old sort of style. I say still, you still can, if you're buying these plugs on the internet, you still can buy these type of plugs. Um, but I recommend using the pass-through because they're a bit easier to do uh, and you can, 100% make sure that you get a good connector, a good connection onto your cable. Uh, so these particular ones are the blank type. So I'm going to get rid of these um, off screen and then we'll get the Klein tools back in. Um, it's not only Klein tools that makes the pass through. It just happens that my tool is made by that particular company uh, for the RJ45 pass through uh, connectors. Okay, so I'm going to use Cat6 cable, um, especially for patch panels and shorter cables. Um, you can get away with Cat6. You don't need Cat6A. Um, it's only when you go up to sort of up past 30 meters, 40 meters that you can actually uh, really need to be using Cat6A. Um, but like I say, we're making up this Cat6. You see the difference there between the two cables? The Cat5 is the gray one uh, and the purple one, which we're doing today, is the uh, Cat6 cable. Uh, so they are slightly uh, thicker in diameter. So you just need to make sure it goes into the connectors that you've purchased. Um, mine are obviously ones that I use all the time, so I know it goes in. Also, if you uh, purchase separate boots to go onto your cable, make sure that they go on. Now these red ones are a bit tight, as you can see there on the cable. So I'm not going to use them. Uh, I'm going to use these blue ones because they tend to go up and down. Uh, they're not. They're a bit slack. Um, be nice just to be a bit tighter uh, but for making up this video it's perfectly fine it just melt helps it uh, makes it a bit easier to see what's going on so put your cable uh, put your boots onto your cable uh, one facing one way and one the other as you can see push them out of the way while you carry on with your termination so like i say i'm using the rg45 pass through uh, they're called different things on the internet and pass through or feed through uh, but you can see if you can just get the light right, there's a little slot in the end there, you can just see it, uh, and that's where the cables pass through. And it's really good compared to what it used to be like, because here you can actually pull your cables through that little pass-through slot in the RJ45, uh, RJ45 connector, and actually pull it through so it keeps everything nice and tight. Uh, and also stops, obviously, all your cross-interference, and make sure you make good connections when you're terminating your cable off. Okay, so the next thing is make sure uh, that you're going to wire it correctly. There's a couple of different ways of doing this. Um, a and B, I almost always use um, the B, uh, type B. Uh, but you might be doing it for, uh, for a certain thing, might be wanting to do type A. Uh, but either way, they are slightly different. The good thing about this particular um, bit of kit that I've got here, this Klein uh, crimper that I've got, it does have the wiring colors on it um, obviously if you're doing these quite a lot you'll memorize it anyway uh, but it's important you get this the right way around so basically if you're doing the t568b with a connector in your hand and the clip facing down uh, the wire orange and white wire on, wants to be on the left hand side of the clip and if you're doing the t568a version then the green and white wire wants to be on the left hand side. So like I said, this, um, this crimp tool has a little cutter on it. So I'll just cut the end off just to make a nice clean cut. Uh, so we're working off uh, a nice clean end uh, for this next bit. 
So we need to strip back the insulation off the cable. You can do this a couple of ways. I'll show you both ways, uh, just so if you don't have um, a stripper on your tool, you can actually use your snips to do it. So just snip into the end and then pull back the insulation. And if you grab the main bulk of the wires with your other hand and you want to pull one sort of 90 degrees to the other and it should run a, a nice little strip uh, down as you get um, get it moving. The longer it is, the easier it is. So I'm just going to do it quite long. Uh, you only need about an um, inch and a half, two inch should come in through, but I'll just make sure you've got enough just so you can see on the video. Makes it nice and clear. And then pull it back with one hand uh, while snipping round with the other. And if you keep your flat part of the snips facing towards the cables, and make sure they're pushed out the way each time you clip. And the aim, in, the aim here is to make sure the insulation is... Uh, a nice clean cut um, all the way around the uh, internal cables. So it needs to be a nice, flat, clean, circular cut all the way around. So I'm just snipping and tidying up, making sure the flats of my snips are facing towards the um, inside cables, work your way around. Once you've got that um, all the way tidied up and it looks nice and clean all the way around, as you can see there, that will now give us a nice flush fit when we pull the cables back through. Uh, I will show you how to do it with the cable stripper on the um, crimping tool on the other end. Um, so here's the other end now. Um, again, you can clip it off if you want to, but I'm just going to use the stripper side and just show you. So this is the other end of the cable. Um, and on the actual, my particular um, tool, it has the actual strip. So you just put it down gently and then you want to twist it one single motion round, let go. So we're not trying to do too much. And then you just pull it 90 degrees. Don't have to do it 90, as long as it breaks the actual outer sheath. And then you need to pull it off. Now I've done mine a bit long, uh, trying to keep it long for the video. It usually come off quite easy. But you can see here I'm uh, struggling a bit getting the outer sheath off. But that's purely because of the length of um, the length of insulation that I've tried to strip off. Like I said, normally, if you don't only do an inch, inch and a half, it comes off quite easily. Uh, but yeah, once you've crimped it off, and that gives a really clean cut. Um, so if you've got a stripper on your tool, uh, then by all means, use that. If you don't have a cable stripper on there, uh, just use snips to work your way around and make a nice uh, circular clean cut all the way around the cables uh, to get the outer sheath off the Cat 6. Okay, so now we need to... Um, I'm going to cut these back because, like I said, I left these a bit long. Uh, but now we need to start looking at making up the cable uh, for the RJ45 pass-through uh, or the feed-through connector. So if you just pull these sort of 90 degrees to the central wire separator in the middle, so just make sure that your uh, flat face is facing down to snip this little um, separator off. And once you've got that, then we need to unwind the pairs. Uh, you can do this however you want. I tend to do them in the pairs, so I'll unwind one, uh, and then I'll straighten them out. Uh, and just go around the, each different colour uh, to separate the cores, uh, just to straighten the cables, because we'll need them straight as possible when we're going to put them into our connector in a second. So I'll just speed this bit up. So you can see all I'm doing here is untwining, uh, unwinding um, the single cores and then just stretching them out in between my thumb and forefinger uh, and that and when i straighten them out i also tend to twist it in my finger and that just helps just get the uh, cable nice and straight uh, for when we need to put it into the uh, connector the pass through or end pass through feed through connector in a second okay so your um crimp tool might have um the instruction the color codes on them if it doesn't I've put them on the video at the top here. So all you need to, like I said earlier, you need to make sure that uh, you arrange it for the different format you're doing. So I'm going to do the T568B for this uh, RJ45. So I need to lay the cables out in the colour code that, as you can see, in the top left-hand corner. So looking down at the cable, I need it to be orange and white, then the orange core, then the green and white core, then the blue core, then the blue and white core, then the green, solid green core, then the brown and white core, and then the brown core. And that's looking from left to right. So as you can see in the video, what I'm doing is as I'm arranging each of these cables in that format, I am then just, again, squeezing it between my thumb and forefinger and just wiggling it along the line. And that just helps get it straight. 
uh, making sure it's pushed down into the uh, core of the cable um, so they're all nice and tidy so yeah just get them all arranged uh, get the eight um, pairs all arranged in the format that you are doing and once you've got them in that format you can see again just wiggle in once again get the eight strands together uh, here's just run your thumb and forefinger up and down them just to get it um, so they're all locked in place really and this used to be um, uh, you used to have to be 100 percent sure when you was doing this uh, with the original ones the original um, connectors the rj45 connectors because they used to push up against the plastic so you need to and when you guided them in they used to wander all over the place these um cat 6 rj45 or cat 5e rj45 pass through or feed through cables are fantastic with the kit now because you um, as long as they're straight and are in reasonable uh, condition when you uh, straighten them out uh, they pass through the cable and you can literally just pull them into it and then double check to see if you've got it right before you've even crimped and, and wasted the end so yeah they're a really good bit of kit uh, you can clip if you've got a cutter on your um, crimping tool then by all means clip them off um, or if you've got your snips with you just clip them off so they're nice and straight that just helps guide them into your connector in a second so i've just crimped them off with the uh, i've just cut them off with a crimping tool uh, but now i will um, bring up the rj45 feed through uh, connector block and you see that i'm just holding the wires flat and then guiding them into the actual connector so once you've got them into sort of position you'll feel them go and as long as you've gone all nice and straight they'll just drop in nice and easy um so this is the bit these where the feed through cables these rj45 feed through cables are really good so here at this point now you can double check make sure your colors are right um make sure that they're in the right format and the right order um, and if they are then you can push this down now and then hold the cables while you pull down on the rj45 connector block and that just helps the purple uh, in my case this purple outer sheave makes it just lock in place so when you do crimp it off it holds it all nice and tight in position so yeah, double check all your cores make sure they're okay and then we'll crimp it off with the uh, crimp tool the rj45 crimp tool so i'll pass the cables through now Obviously on my tool it's got the uh, two different types, RJ45 um, and also the RJ11. Um, you can't get these wrong because they're a different size connector. So put it into the RJ45, make sure it's pulled tight and then it's a ratchet uh, crimp. So as you pull down on the tool it cuts off the wires that on this side. You see where it says trim. So it trims them off on this side and then also puts pressure on the connector and locks all them the eight cores in place while also crimping the uh, feed through cable uh, connected to the cable so we'll clear these out of the way these bits so that's it just double check your make sure you're happy with the termination and once you are then you can pull up the rj45 boot uh, that you put on earlier and then just put that into position and then that's one end of your cat six cable all terminated and made off with the rj45 feed through connector block so we're going to do the same uh, the other end uh, exactly the same process i know i uh, cut these with the snips but it doesn't really matter it's, that's irrelevant to what we're doing it's exactly the same process unwind the cables line them all up um make sure that you have your snips the right way around when you're cutting off the um, center separator, which I nearly didn't, so that just so we don't damage the single cores. But yeah, so do exactly the same process, unwind the wires um, and then line it up. I will speed this bit up because it's exactly the same both ends, there's no different. Um, make sure you follow the same pattern. Um, if you're doing a B cable, both ends need to be T568B. If you're doing the A, both ends need to be T56A. Um, so make sure you send, uh, follow the same pattern. So I'll speed this section up like I say and then we'll just get to the end of the video. So once I have finished uh, straightening the cores out, uh, then I'm just going to follow the same process. So straighten all the cores out in the correct order. So again I'm following T568B. Make sure they're all in that order, straightened out. And then I'm going to snip the ends off the cable. Then I'm going to offer up the uh, connector to the eight cores with the clip facing down because my orange is on the left hand side clip facing down and then i'm going to get my um 
RJ45 crimps and snip and clip and crimp the feed through connector onto the cable. Once this is done, now I can then bring my strain relief boot up to this end. So both strain relief boots are now pushed up. So if we can just get hold of the boot, there we go. And then push it onto the RJ45 cable. Let's get these out of the way. So I'm also going to uh, put a tester on mine. Um, I've had this tester for years. Um, pair of uh, Fluke uh, testers. You might not have a, a tester available. Now, it doesn't really matter as long as you've made them up okay. I mean, I say it doesn't really matter. You, you should always test the cable once you've made it up uh, to check that all eight, um, all four pairs are all working and up and running. Um, but if you've done and followed the video through and using good quality tools and connectors, with these actual RJ45 pass-through or end pass-through um, connectors, every time you connect one up it's usually really good uh, and makes a really good connection so these are my testers um, these are made by fluke these particular ones and they're an oldish test of these now um, you can get different ones made by klein and all different makes like I say on amazon uh, but the aim here uh, the aim here is to test all eight uh, cores and all four pairs uh, to make sure that uh, all are working uh, basically the slower connections only use two of the pairs uh, and when you go up to cat six and go up to the different speeds then you'll need all four pairs which is what cat six cable is all about obviously having the faster speeds okay so one last thing uh, any of the tools and stuff that i'm using in this video i'm not affiliated with anyone any of these manufacturers so i'm not affiliated with klein or fluke and if i do get a chance to put the uh, links to these um tools and the stuff that you can use connectors uh, in the description below then that'll purely be through the amazon affiliate um, side so i'm not being sponsored by any of the manufacturers in this video okay so i hope you liked the video if you did please do give us the thumbs up please do subscribe to my channel it's really important um, and also any comments below or anything that you'd like to see from my channel thanks again for watching at the computer lab on youtube